Sorry, dude. I'd sniff you, but it's just too chaotic right now. Good morning, fishing freaks. Just coming down the stairs to the dock where the silver bullet is. That's nice. That is convenience. That is it's beautiful. Look at this right here, guys. This is part of the Airbnb. You got a dock. There's normally turkeys out here as well. There's all dads that walk the cliffs, white tails, of course. Old prickly pears getting in season. And we are going after bass today. So in the last video out here, I got on some massive bluegill. The biggest bluegill that I've ever captured. I caught my PB and then I think I broke it like four or five times. So incredibly fun. Today we're gonna go after largemouth bass, but we have a beautiful thing in late summer bass fishing called overcast. I think what is going to be available to us is the top water. That's what everybody wants to throw in the morning, right? A top water and then possibly some moving baits. Jerry, are you coming in with me? Am I getting the hammer in my boat or are you just loading up? Uh, I don't up? know. Yeah. I'm just loading up. Jerry's not sure. He's... I brought you some goodies though. You did? Yeah. What'd you bring me? I got you a sandwich. No way. I got your sandwich. Jerry, you made a sandwich for and me? And I got some cold beverages. Oh my Drink. goodness. Well, happy Did birthday. That, that's my present to you. Thank you, man. <laughs> a sandwich. Yeah. From the man himself. Do you want a beer? Oh, sure. Oh. Oh. Thank you, you so two? much. I'm going to have that after my first fish catch today. And then this will be go. after my second yeah. one. Thank you. It's a rare occasion. We have, we have potentially a drop of rain that is going to hit the ground in Texas, y'all. There's, there's been wildfires out here as well that have been pretty destructive, so let's pray for rain and let's pray for Mondos. John B, you ready to jerk some necks? Hell yeah, brother. Cash some checks? Hell yeah, brother. All right, systems are a go. Get on some crazy hauling. I'll do the same. Today's video is sponsored by the Mondo Worm from Guggen Baits. Dot com. I was actually throwing it last night a little bit. The worm just just destructs this time of year. And it's actually where I'm going to start this morning is uh, this little spot I found last night just tinkering around after doing that bluegill fishing. I uh, found a, a hump that is off of a main lake point. There's a point and then it comes up to this specific little hump area. It's only like six or seven feet of water but there was uh, quite a few fish that were stacked on it. I caught, caught five or six of them. Um, nothing over two and a half pounds, but I just think that there'll probably be some more fish there this morning. It's on such a steep and deep area that can hold a lot of fish. But it's gonna stay overcast. I'm gonna throw a top water and maybe even try to get some stripers and stuff as well. you guys on the tripod if you like this I know some of you did on the last time let me know in the comments down below drop a comment about your your favorite anything in life what do you like to do tell me about yourself right now let's engage those algorithms let's engage these jaws I agree yes I agree to the terms of service to use my unit structure wise we have a large point that is out ahead of me. On top of that point, there is a uh, hump with rocks on it, like these, these chunky rocks. Rocks are all over the place, but it's just something about this little hump on top of the shelf that really gets them motivated. I'm sitting in 57 feet of water right now, and I'm gonna throw up into about six or eight. So big time shelf. 
So right here we have these fish that are sitting on this edge and they're using this shelf to feed. Sometimes they'll go up on top of it, eat, and then they'll come back, but they're just hanging around that. But there's going to be some fish up here as well. So I'm going to start casting up there, but I want to try to hit these first. Oh my God, big. Oh God. Oh. oh, there was a much bigger one there. Much bigger one. That fish is fat, fat, fat. Why is there always a boat driving by when you have a fish in your hand? Keep going. God, dog it. There you go. Hit that throttle, buddy. All right, there she is. First fish of the day. Give it a sniff. Oh yeah. There was a bigger one. I could just hear the freaking contusion on it when it hit. And that fish hit over like, I'm gonna say 70 feet of water. <laughs> it's crazy. There's just a giant shelf and these fish are uh, pushing the shad on top of the shelf. There's another one. There we go. Good one. Oh yeah, a little better fish. Oh my gosh. Woo. Oh yeah, baby. First thing in the morning, getting a topwater bite going. Uh, liking that walking style. Gotta smash that like button for that, guys. There's a good one. It's about three pounds. Tasty. Yummy. Love to see it. What do we got going here? We got a little something happening. Thunder clouds, that's what's happening. That's definitely some better size fish than what I was catching last night. There's a group of three. There's three of them right there. They are moving on top of the shelf. Come here. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh. Uh, just got my crankbait and the trolling motor. Left it hanging over the side of the boat. Top water chaos. Oh yeah, we are just twisted up. All up in there. Not a good time. Oh my God, busting over here. Not exactly what you want happening when they are busting on the spot, but got it out and it wouldn't be a Guggen type day if something like that didn't happen, did it? Would it? Oh my goodness, raindrops. This area needs this rain bad. Texas needs this rain bad. Sometimes that little raindrop just gets them excited. Turns their little bass nipples stiff. Oh, you know what? I said I was gonna drink that beer that Jerry gave me on my first fish, and a topwater fish at that. I can't, I can't let that go unnoticed. I don't normally do this at 7:39 in the morning, but it was my birthday last night. I love this lake. I had some special times out here with my boy John. I had a good time last night, and it's tradition for me to go night fishing on my birthday and my birthday's in august so fishing during the day usually sucks and technically i did catch some fish at night it was definitely after dark so keeping up with tradition and you gotta have beer when you're night fishing 
I'm just making excuses for being a day drinker now. All right, I got to bring you guys. Get, got, <laughs> I got to bring you guys back in the game here because the rain just stopped, and it is top water activity. I'm seeing more. Oh my God! As soon as it hit the water, a looks like a three pounder exploded on it. Holy cow! <laughs> It's two and a half, but still, that's what you call landing on the money. Landing on the money. <laughs> these are not stripers, which is crazy. They've kind of pushed these shad off of the, oh God, they're right in front of me. Right in front of me, gotta get this fish off. Sorry, dude, I'd sniff you, but it's just too chaotic right now. It's like, as soon as these raindrops started happening, these fish just got turned on to come up top. And sometimes get the shad going towards the surface and just got them going, man. So I started seeing off the spot within the spot, just on this whole bank, some pops and boils and I thought, man, I got to get that camera back on. Something crazy might happen. And I actually had a fish come up right next to me and bust. And I threw the swim bait in the water. It hit the swim bait. I could see like the swim bait get knocked under the water. Saw the flash of the fish and I didn't catch them. You see those busts and you just start chasing them and chasing them and chasing them. And then you're so far away from your cover you're just, you know, basically tuna fishing out in the ocean. Oh God, they're knocking shad out there. That's probably a hundred feet of water though. Maybe they are just, they're just gonna roam. Overcast day, they're gonna roam. When you get an overcast day like this, it's like having, <clears throat> it's like having morning for a few hours. Everybody. Oh, I see the bait fish, they're chasing. I'm behind them. Oh, God, they're just right here. I can see, oh, oh, it broke me off. Golly. I had to have had a bad spot in my line. Barely set the hook. Oh. I could see a group of bait fish at the surface, nervous water waking, threw right behind it, got bit. Ah, oh, golly, man. LFG, what are you doing? You gotta check your line with braid, guys. You know, it's throwing 30 pound right there. And something that happens on braid when you throw in those top waters is your hooks will get just caught up in the line and they get all twisted. Since it's so calm, I'm actually gonna try throwing the hound. I've done really well on the hound out here. It's, um, it's not as loud, it's not as aggressive. And I almost lost a rod there. Probably just had a giant striper on there. Never really got to feel the surge. It was just clean, just a clean cut. I feel like I'm getting static electricity in my freaking shoes. Like lightning's close. There's a bluff. Oh God, there was some lightning. Oh, lightning and graphite rods, that's never a good combo. Fish on, behind the boat. Had to cut camera for a second. are there's a hound fish Woo! you almost got me there bud there you go there you go get on out of here get on out of here <sighs> oh jeez. caught up in that line i really need i need an assistant here need somebody in the boat with me today i was dragging a worm just for a minute thinking try to get one of these fish that are on top 
because I saw a few uh, that had moved on the scope up on the on the top side, and then right behind me, you know, two pounder just busting shad. Oh, there's one right here. Look at this. Look at this. This is this is why I want to stay here is because it's just completely some random stuff like this. Oh my God! Look at these. Look at these two three pounders just. right next to the boat, right next to the boat, 60 feet of water. God, how did I not get him? Maybe it was just too close quarters. I, I will say the percentage rate of casting to the ones that I see busting shad is, the rate of hookup is pretty decent. You know, if you can get to them within five seconds, that's kind of the, that's what you got. Oh, got him. Oh my God. Basically landed on his head. <laughs> it's that five second rule for school and largies. And that hound and this other top water that I was throwing were basically the perfect size. This one's a little smaller profile. And it's more of a spitter than a walker. But that's what we got. That's what we got out here. Wolf packs. Wolf packs of two and three pounders, which in my book is pretty fun times. So I'm not exactly on the juice. It's like, I mean, I can cast to it right here, but these, the fish are not on it. They're just chasing shad in proximity to it. When I got up this morning, I was like, man, I wanna go here because anything could happen. Like that big striper, you know, that can happen. We can get these large mouths. A giant school of white bass could come up here. This is basically, in terms of roads, like this is the freeway intersection right here we are on i-35 in late summer this is where they like to be they'll go all the way out to the main river channel and then as fall comes in temps cool they'll they'll start working their way back into the creeks more and chase those shad there's a bass sitting at the surface here 15 feet in front of me That hound actually sounds pretty good. It's got a little better knock than I remember. I just need something loud when you're fishing over 50 feet of water. You try to get fish to come up. You need something aggressive. Oh, goodness. I was just gonna say, I just saw a school of bass come off of that ledge that was in the dozens. This is probably one of them. They looked kind of small. But we're talking major, major school. Should I leave this spot or, tro or go try to explore something else? Let me know in the comments what you would do. Literally as I was saying that, my GoPro cut out. <laughs> should I stay or should I go? And this three pounder comes up, crushes that hound. <laughs> And there was a blue heron on the shore that he flew all the way out here and was like, I guess thinking he was gonna steal that fish, I don't know. I said, nope, this one's mine. Boy, this is probably the best eat that I've had on top water. I would let this guy go. So that is two or three fish I've had just walking this bay over this the shelf, this particular little spot, gotten them to come up. So right now I see a couple of fish like 25 feet out. They're just hovering. I mean, four foot, five foot under the surface. So I can definitely get their attention with this hound. I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining, but I sure would like to 
see like a four or five pounder. Get a confirmation on one of those jumping out of the water. I told myself I was only gonna fish for a few hours this morning because I gotta get back and edit Tuesday's tip video, get it uploaded. I think you guys would forgive me if I was a little late on the upload because we got, we got a top water thing happening here. Holy mongoloids. Look like a dolphin just took a tuna out there. I'm not gonna move, I'm not gonna chase you. I'm gonna stay right here, you can come to me. Oh, right here. I'm trying to take my, why, 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 why even throw anything else? Oh God, he boogered at my top water. Hit it though. They're just clapping top water cheeks. Have to have this thing on standby. I mean, I went down in the boat for a second to get another bait and they started busting. By the way, if you guys want to learn how to walk these top waters, I have a whole tip video on it. Last, these, last Tuesday's tip video. Walking baits, keys, tips, tricks. One of the things I was gonna say is just leave your rod over the side of the boat like this with like a foot a line out. That way when you're messing around with something else and you see one, you can immediately pick it up because you guys have seen today how important it is for timing. It's that five second rule. But if you can make it like three seconds, now you're talking. Okay, I'm gonna put my rod down. Maybe I'll even check my phone if anybody is feeling frosty. Right there, over the side, foot a line out. Oh, what is in my rear right now? Oh, no. I have sat on top water. This is what happens right here. This is what happens when things get chaotic in the top water spectrum. Okay, fish, perfect time for you. I got a hook in my rear. God, these shorts are one of the best things we've ever made, but they're definitely not hook proof. Oh. Don't act like you've never been here. Oh. Quite honest with you. You did, as soon as I lift my rod box up. Five second rule. Oh, we got, we got a puller here. Ooh, this is a tasty one. You're not a striper, are you? Uh, nope, just big large mouth. No, it is a striper. My first striper. All right, what's your behavior gonna be like? What are you feeling like? Should I boat flip you? How are you gonna do? Oh, that one right there. Not a giant from striper standards, but I'll tell you what, very, very fun. That right there is like catching a five pound largemouth, the way it fights. Okay, foot line out, side of the boat. Let's try this again. Oh my gosh, you know what? I, I forgot about my, my spoon dangle. That's the rod I need to have out for those little ledge poppers. Sometimes it's almost worth it to just fish something else and have the top water ready, or have two top waters. Oh my God, I'm coming through the zone too. That's a big one. Got him. Got him. Good large mouth. Oh, big one. Oh, big one. Come on, baby. I actually got that fish. Oh, he's got it down the hatch. Look at that. Gene. 
This is a gorgeous fish, y'all. Gorgeous. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, the old lazy fighter. You got that big mouth. Oh. Oh, I knew I made a good decision staying here. Oh, yes. That is a long fish right there. Let me get him unhooked real quick. He's, he's got a deep. Let me re revive that guy in the well real quick. Yes. That is fun, guys. That is fun. I can't believe I'm just fishing this one spot. Just keeps reloading. Look at that backlash. It's the old excited backlash. Oh, five second rule. I could just tell the suction when that bass ate that shad. It was going to be a good one. The old hound coming through. It's not choppy like it was this morning, so it's actually much better conditions for the hound. Oh man, that just butters my biscuits right there, guys. I, it's almost nine. I told myself I was gonna get going, get going in. I may have to end on that fish, but God, it's hard to leave when they're just popping like that. Woo! All right, there it is, guys. This fish, I mean, when it's filled out, it's probably over five, but I bet you it's only four pounds right now. It's super long. Let's get it back in the water. All right, thank you for the awesome topwater strike. Go eat some more stuff down there. I know, hot summer fish. Had to revive you. You can do it, you can do it. There you go, and gone. So important to revive your fish in the summertime, guys. And I mean, I hate even taking pictures with them, but I never keep more than one fish, usually ever. I usually take a picture right there and let the fish go, but especially in the summertime, if you're keeping a bunch of fish in your live well to take uh, you know, like a, a group picture with a bunch of them, um, it's just not good for them. They usually uh, have a hard time in the summer to begin with. So since I caught that fish, I haven't seen another one bust and the sun is starting to break just behind me, so it could be over. But uh, you know what, I'm gonna sign it off. Who doesn't wanna throw top water for two hours and just catch good largemouth like that? It's also a rare occasion for this summer just because we have this, these overcast conditions that normally you get up early, you go out, you get like 30 minutes of possible top water, and today we've had you know a couple hours because of this overcast and rain, so. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It was good times. And if you want to see the tips on uh, the walking baits, the gear, the whole gear setup, uh, similar to like what I did with my weightless uh, setup, um, I actually did one out on the water here. So you can go see like the techniques and the little tips that'll help you catch more fish in these type conditions when you got schooling fish in the summertime or you just want to catch them on a walking style bait. You've never used them before. You want to learn how to walk the dog. I've got a video on that. Fishing freaks, you gotta smash that like button on today, man. It's good times out here. Thank you guys for being with me. And I hope your line's getting stretched too. And may God bless you and all of your outdoor adventures. I'll see you on the next one.